And so when I say Chinese, I want you to scream out the, na the nation that's associated with this. For example, if I say Chinese, you're going to say what? China. All right, let's say it with authority. When I say Chinese, you say what? China. All right, that's just a, a test right there. So here we go. Chinese. China. Russian. Russia. Italian. Italy. German. German. Swedish. Swedish. Korean. Korea. Egyptian. Egypt. Nigerian. I hope you were able to successfully identify the issue. The lion won't sleep tonight. Cause we woke now. And we woke now. I said the lion won't sleep tonight. Cause we woke now. And we woke now. They want us to. Sell our souls to butter profit Like God's property It's hard to market So we steady to aim Keep your eyes on target Cause when you got to drive Yeah, they'd rather you park it But I don't valet You ain't getting these keys I'm keeping close hands I'm on bending knee I'm just a reflection Dealing with eight sections Art mixed with life You can feel the convection You lie and won't sleep No, this is the gentleman right here with the camera in his hand. Wave your hand. Pastor James Wesley Carr. Yeah, James Wesley Carr. No, no. What's your name? Oh, Kelly Richardson. Kelly Richardson. Pastor Kelly Richardson. He's a great, great grand nephew. Yeah. Nephew of one of our uh, first pastors. Wow. Yeah. Matter of fact, that's his uncle right here in the corner of the action saying that's going to get to your left. <laughs> You got the eyes. <laughs> it looked just like him. You got the same eyes. Anyway, come on, guys. Come on. That's funny. Yeah. I'm still looking like him. Look on the outside edge of the pews. Look on the outside edge of the pews where you are. You see the different markings alongside the edge of the pews? They represent the different tribes that made up our congregation back then and spoke over six different languages among themselves. These were small tribes enslaved by larger tribes and sold to the Europeans as they came along the African coast. One of the major languages they spoke back then was that of Aramaic and also two of Hebrew, which means the writings read from bottom to top. Ashalam alaikum. Which means, which means, peace be unto you. It's not a Muslim term. It's actually the same greeting which Christ gave unto the disciples when he met them in that region. Most countries in that region read from right to left. Here in America, we read from left to right. That's why the pastors in the St. Glass window up front here are going in numbers two through seven from the right hand side over to the left, to the left, to the left. This is First African Baptist Church, the oldest black church in North America. The building built by slaves. The gentleman that laid the first brick laid the last. The balcony hold pews that actually were built by slaves. They have the oldest information in this building. That information is written in cursive Hebrew writing. The same people that have stripped us of our identity and labeled us as a, as a color have told us what it means to be black. I, I'm, I'm so glad you're here because you can bring great clarity. Can you tell us a little bit about the Sephardic Jews and how they were scattered because um, they went west? I sure can. Because the reason why I want to is because a lot of them, and a lot of people don't know this, are in the Caribbean. They are. In the islands. I and know you're that. one of them. I and know I'm that. one of them. <laughs> I know that. Uh, because, you know, a lot of folk don't know that the, those roots are there. One of the first um, batches of slaves that came to Jamaica, they were the Sephardic Jews. It's documented. And they're all over, the, they're Caribbean, all over the Caribbean, South America, Central America, yeah. and even the central, South Central United States. States wow. and DNA testing is a factor in all this now. 
I can't figure it out. If y'all are the chosen ones, shouldn't y'all be obeying better than me? I mean, I even try to keep the fourth commandment. Try to keep the Sabbath day holy. I've spent many of hours trying to figure out which is the right Sabbath day because we know that old Catholic church something a little fishy about them, don't we? With that white Jesus. I mean, here's a white guy telling you black people that your Messiah is not a long-haired white European guy. Your Messiah is Hebrew. My darker skinned brothers and sisters. When are you guys going to wake up and become kings and queens? Uh, the entire Bible is about black people. Um, not only was Jesus black, but every character in the Bible seems to be black too. Yeah, Zephaniah and Jeremiah and Jebediah, those, those all aren't white people names, okay? Um, and Jesus wasn't some tan, partially melanated Middle Eastern person either. I'm talking straight up black dude, okay? Even in the book of Revelation, when you get the vision of Daniel, he's describing someone with feet like burnt brass and white woolly hair, and we've got the deep running water voice with the, the red eyes, and uh, you guys, he's black. It, the Jewish people are black people, like Kanye was right. Today, it is prohibited, and you can Google this, to do a DNA test in Israel. Totally forbidden. Wrong. It's illegal. It's a crime. You'll be jailed if you do a DNA test in Israel. Why? Because they know the truth will come out. You come from Poland, you come from Ukraine, you came from Europe, you came from everywhere else. And they were the original Middle Eastern Jews who lived together with the Muslims and the Christians for centuries. For centuries. So what happened to a lot of the Jews? You know, you know what you are? You are an ancient Israelite. Ancient Israelite. That's what you are. I'm telling you. That's who you are. If you give me time, yeah. if you give me time, but, 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 no, 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 we don't have so many years. I know, I know. Look, look at this. This is pages and pages of yes. notes, and I promise we'll give yes. more teaching. But here is my challenge to you. All right, I'm hearing some of your traditions. It's like the days of the Bible. Yes. Do you want to remain ancient Israelites, or you want to be Jews? Do you want to remain ancient Israelites? Or you want to be Jews? Do you want to remain? I'm hearing some of your traditions. It's like the days of the Bible. Yes. Do you want to remain ancient Israelites? Or you want to be Jews? That is the question I have for you. Thank you. I'll answer that question. Go, Go ahead. ahead. I will help you. After the demise of Solomon, we now have the northern and southern kingdom of Israel. Yes. So when we talk about Jews, Jews are Israelites, but all Israelites are not Jews. The ten tribes that got lost are not Jews. They were Israelites. Jews are Israelites, but all Israelites are not Jews. The ten tribes that got lost are not Jews. They were Israelites. Jews are Israelites, but all Israelites are not Jews. The ten tribes that got lost are not Jews. They were Israelites. So when we talk about Jews, Jews are Israelites, but all Israelites are not Jews. The ten tribes that got lost are not Jews. They were Israelites. Well, it's depending. So uh, the well, minority well. cannot swallow the majority. We are here. We are the majority <laughs> down here. So you are minority, and we are older than you. Genesis chapter 11 verse 10 explains the genealogy of Shem. Shem was a black man in Africa. If you repeat this fact, they can't laugh at you. If you repeat this fact, they can't laugh at you. If you repeat this fact, they can't laugh at you. I want to say peace and blessings to everyone. I want to apologize for my delay. Um, actually, I changed my lesson up a little bit. Uh, so what you see me teach is what I um, changed up at the last minute because I had to 
changed the initial my my initial um, approach on how I was going to address the Cat Williams um, video that I uploaded. You know, I, I like to upload clips and do play playbooks off of that, and so I really want to deal with that. And um, so I changed the topic around. So the topic actually is Cat Williams, uh, the fallen angels, right? So that's what we're going to deal with tonight. Cat Williams, worship of fallen angels. All right. And uh, and I'll explain it as we progress in this lesson. And you'll see where I'm going at with this, uh, because um, I actually got to sit back and really listen to his interview with Joe Rogan and also went back and listened to his club Shay Shay uh, interview with Shannon Sharp. And I listened to some other videos and clips and some of the clips that I've already had of some of his older interviews. And um, I'm going to reveal some stuff to you guys tonight. And so, and we'll answer some questions, right? So initially the topic was, um, and the goal was to, to explain woke folk or folk woke, you know, but really address his uh, medallion and address uh, the watch that he wears. And we're still going to do that, but I wanted to uh, change the the subject as far as the topic up. We're still going to deal with Cat Williams and we're going to deal with how, uh, the fallen angels. I'm going to bring all of this together. And you guys will see where we, you know, see where I'm going at when I, as I be, uh, progress in this lesson. So let's go ahead and get into it. All right, let's go ahead and get into it. And I want to make this clear because, you know, you always have those few stragglers, especially I call some of them super brews. When you post certain videos and uh, far as clips, they'll post comments as if you are worshiping someone or if you are endorsing what uh, someone is saying far as their entire belief system. So I have several celebrities on this channel that I agree with something they said and I will post it, but I'm not worshiping anyone. So family, let's let's uh, for for the handful of people, don't post any of that in the comment section. Don't push that narrative because we're dealing with Cat Williams or whomever it is that we're worshiping. No one is worshiping anyone. So, but nevertheless, I just thought I'd put that out there, just kind of preface this before I get into it. So let's go to get into this. Cat Williams, the fallen angels. Let me say that again. Cat Williams, the, the fallen angels. We're going to deal with that tonight. All right. So let's go to get into it. We got, a, we got quite a bit we're going to cover, but I tried to simplify the lesson far as reduce it so it's not as lengthy. But again, I want to say Shabbat, Shalom uh, to those that honor the Shabbat. Uh, again, Shabbat, Shalom. And to others, uh, Shabbat, Shalom. Uh, I, I don't make it a deal breaker if you say Shalom uh, because I understand uh, what we are with when it comes to the language, but that's a whole nother discussion. So again, Cat Williams, the fallen angels, sons of who? So we're going to go ahead and deal with that. Here we go. So what is the origin of Cat Williams' folk woke medallion, right? And matter of fact, before I go on, let me make sure my audio is good here. Let me make sure my audio is good. All right. The audio is good. All right. Just wanted to make sure my audio is good. All right. So what is the origin of Cat Williams folk woke medallion and his watch? Because he do have a line of jewelry. Right. He has a whole line of his own custom jewelry. And, um, you know, so I really want to give clarity. Exactly. In, uh, from what he stated, I, I didn't have time to put his audio clips here. But I do have the quote from the Joe Rogan uh, interview that he did with Cat Williams. And I tell you, even just listening to that entire discussion, you know, it was just sound like they both were, uh, you know, uh, weeded up. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, I mean, it, the, the conversation, I mean, it was like 
Anyway, I'm not going to get into it. But anyway, so what is the origin of Cat Williams' folk woke medallion and the watch he was wearing? Is this of demonic origin? Let me ask that question again. Is this of demonic origin? Right? And this is the medallion that he was wearing that uh, Joe Joe Rogan uh, asked the question on. He and uh, and I have the quote of exactly what Cat Williams said. And we're going to get to this in a second. So this is his comment here, right? This is an exact quote. But before I do that, let me do something real quick. Um, let me adjust something with this slide to make sure that... Um, All right, let me do something real quick. All right, that's fine. Okay. All right, I thought I needed to make some adjustments here. Okay, I won't worry about it. Okay, just, okay. So this is his quote. This is Cat Williams' exact quote from the interview. When he got, when, when he was asked a question about the medallion that you see him wearing in this picture here. So this is that thing you see all Anu, uh, Anukaya, oh, excuse me, Anukaya guys have that looks like a wristwatch. It's a timekeeping uh, compass. So let me read it again. This is that thing you see all Anunnaki guys have that looks like a wristwatch. It's a timekeeping compass. Let me say it one more time. This is his exact quote from the interview. This is that thing you see all Anunnaki guys have that looks like a wristwatch. It's a timekeeping compass. Now, if this is the origin, right? Let's just say. The watches, right? That's all it is, is a watch. If it originated with the Anakis, Anunnaki's, is it witchcraft, you know, to wear a watch? We'll get to that in a second. But for me, that's not the thing is uh, him wearing a compass or his medallion in his watch stems from a compass. But I'm going to share when we get to the end of this lesson exactly what uh, his belief. I figured it out. I know exactly what he believes. Right. A lot of breadcrumbs. But I was listening to all of his interviews. Now I exact now I know exactly what he believes And who he believes. I mean, uh, what he believes in, what was his religion and who's his influencer. All right. So I see some of you guys here that says that the watch is demonic. So that's why I want to make sure you guys, when you say his watch is demonic, know what you're saying. Because, again, uh, I'm going to I'm going to show you that when we start dealing with watches. We can go to the ancient these ancient civilizations outside of Israel. Outside of Israel. We could go to those countries or those nations and some of the technology that you see that those other nations have developed. We can say that many of us are using that technology today, starting with the rock, the watch. Starting with the watch. That's what I got other things I could go into. But I want to make sure we understand and make sure we put things in this proper perspective. But we're going to we're going to we're going to, uh, again, address exactly what he believed. After listening to all these interviews, I figured out exactly what he believed. And guess what? If we say that this compass having a watch or a compass is demonic, then guess what? Israel is in trouble. Matter of fact, if you understand the quap, the quap is a sundial. 
right? When we look at Gideon, Sundial, did a lesson on this. So we have to be careful of how we uh, uh, approach discussion, especially this here. The issue is not the watch, but I'm going to show you exactly what he believes in the end. I'll, I'll have to do a whole nother lesson on going into the details of that, but we'll get into it. All right. So again, that's why I want to make it clear, family. The issue is not having a compass on his wrist or around his neck. That's not an issue. Because guess what? If you have a watch, if you have a clock, guess what? Then based upon some of you guys' logic, you are promoting demonic things. So I'll read this one more time. This is that thing you see all Anunnaki guys have that looks like a wristwatch. It's a timekeeping compass. So what does Cat Williams believe? That's the question. What does he believe? Now, the first thing that came to my mind, right, when I heard the interview and even looking at his jury on the surface, the first thing I thought about is the goddess fortune. Who is this goddess fortune, right? This goddess fortune is also known as lady luck. I'm going to break this down to you. Fortune, the Roman triple goddess of fate, had many fortune titles. And these are some of the different titles that uh, she went up under. I'm not going to read all of these out. But nevertheless, it says good and bad fate. Fortuna Augusti was the foundation of the emperor's right to rule. Romans swore by the emperor's personal fort fortuna or fortuna who governed his soul. Caesars constantly had before them, even during sleep or on voyages, a golden statue of the goddess, which on their death. They transmitted to their successor and which they invoked under the names Fortuna or Fortuna uh, Regia or Regia, excuse me if I'm butchering these names. So uh, uh, a translation of uh, Tyke ba um, Basileos, all right? In other words, fate of the rulership, all right? So Greek Tyke or, uh, and again, family, forgive me if I'm butchering these, uh, these names. This is not my forte as for Greek. So, and I'm not familiar with, actually, I don't mention these gods and goddesses all the time. So forgive me if I butcher these names, all right? Uh, like the old school would say, charge it to my head, not to my heart. But anyway, so it goes on to say, when she was a fate attached to an individual, like a guardian angel, she was a psyche, in other words, a soul, or anima, in other words, spirit. Her Roman name, Fortuna, right, Fortuna or Fortuna, may have descended from Fortuna, let me say it again, descended from Fortuna, in other words, she who turns the year. So now we see this is kind of dealing with timekeeping. But let's take it a step further. It says the great mother turning the celestial wheel of the stars and also the karmic will of fate. Now we're getting into karma. When it says karmic will of fate, right? So we see here, again, the great mother turning the celestial will of the stars. And this is, again, this is dealing with the Romans. This is dealing with the Greeks belief system. All right. So under the name Agatha, in other words, which means kindly fortune, the goddess was associated with a serpent consort. And we see here Agath uh, Agatha demon, which is a genius, kindly rate. That's what it means. Or the Orphic bowl of the fifth century AD. He appeared next to her in the guise of the Lord of death, halfway around the circle at the point of midnight, holding in his right hand the poppy stalk of the sleep of death, turned downward, in this case, 
Fortuna or Fortuna and her consort stood for a fortunate life. Followed by a gentle death, the goddess favored ones went to her paradise in the far west, often called the fortunate isles. On this goddess's magic wheel of time, let me say that again. On this goddess's magic wheel of time, odd numbers were sacred to her and even numbers to her consort. Now, I hope y'all grab hold of this. Now, I hope you're starting to pick up what this wheel of time is, right? When it says here, the goddess magic wheel of time, odd numbers were sacred to her and, and it says even numbers to her consort. So. What's the origins of the Wheel of Fortune? Y'all know the Wheel of Fortune. When you understand the Wheel of Fortune, you start understanding that this is what we're dealing with right here. This is dealing with a Roman goddess of fate. When you're dealing with that, uh, some of you guys may be familiar of the roulette. What's that? The roulette table, right? The black and red letters. I mean, uh, uh, black and red um, blocks, right? With the numbers written on it, right? That is all part of this here. The lottery is all part of this goddess, right? That is worshiping the goddess fortune. That is all part of uh, pagan worship. Okay, so Roman religious festivals were scheduled for the odd numbers in other words female so the odd numbered female right so the odd number days points to the females because they were supposed to be more uh propitious uh than the male days so uh let me read this again so you understand so the odd numbers so when you see those odd numbers on the, the roulette table or the wheel of fortune and other things that spent off of that, the odd numbers point to the females. All right. And it goes on to say here, and of course the black and the even numbers is going to uh, point to the male, but it goes on to say Fortuna or Fortuna became patroness of gamblers when her fate wheel was secularized as the carnival wheel of fortune. And she was renamed Lady Luck. All right. So this is where you get the lottery from. This is where you get, again, uh, the will of fortune. This is all the worship of this Roman goddess. And you see the influence of this all around us from board games, you know, to deck of cards, you know, the colors and all. Uh, There's a reason why you have black colors versus and, and for for uh, let's just say for the uh clubs and the spades and you see red letters for the hearts and diamonds all of this is still an influence of this particular goddess all right it goes on to say here called a portoon which might lead horses astray make travelers lose their way and other pranks like most other forms of the goddess she was converted into a malicious spirit, all right? So, also, Chris Kringle came to mind because I did a lot of st uh, uh, studying and uh, took taking a lot of classes on different religions and what they believe and all, and not getting into all of that. But initially, when I saw this, it made me think of fortune, the goddess fortune, as we just covered right? Fate, the goddess of fate, which is Rome, uh, dealing with the Romans and the Greeks. But also what came to mind is Kris Kringle. Kris Kringle came to my mind. Kris Kringle is another source that comes to mind when you see this medallion. But here's why. Who is Kris Kringles? Let's see who Kris Kringles is. Luther, Right. Martin Luther, the leader of the Protestant movement. Martin Luther wanted a Protestant alternative to the Roman Catholics practicing of celebrating the feast of St. Nicholas. In other words, Santa Claus. 
So you had the Roman Catholic Church because the Protestants being led out of uh, led led by Luther and others. Right. Led them out of um, Roman Catholicism, but he still wanted to be connected to the tenets of Roman Catholicism. So instead, he came up with an alternative, pretty much doing the same thing. But he wanted to come up with a Protestant alternative to the Roman Catholic practice of celebrating the Feast of St. Nick. You know, Santa Claus. So this is where we get Kris Kringles. So instead of giving gifts in the name of Santa Claus on December 6th, Luther started the tradition of giving gifts in the name of Kris Kringle on Christmas Eve. So Kris Kringles is a uh, pretty much is uh, uh, comes from uh, Martin Luther to be an alternative to Santa Claus, a Protestant alternative to Santa Claus. And now today is all meshed together. So Luther's Kris Kringle is actually called Christ of the Wheel. <laughs> Let me say that again. Let me say that again. I hope you guys grabbing this. I'm giving you, I'm going, we're going to break this thing down. Luther's Kris Kringle is actually called Christ of the Wheel. All right. Before we go on, I see a couple of, um, contributions here. Let me give some shout outs real quick. I want to start off to my sister holding it down in um, Pennsylvania, Nora Bain. And um, I should be coming up that way in April. I'll uh, I'll let everyone know. I got an invitation up there in April. So I'll give you guys a heads up. So that way you guys can, uh, we can, we can um, fellowship uh, together and really appreciate the love and support. Uh, when I came up that way uh, last year. So I really appreciate the love and support. Great uh, putting names to faces and so forth. So I really appreciate this sister right here for the love and support. Amen. So may Yah abide among his people again. May we learn to be obedient to choose, uh, to whom choose us, to him who choose us, excuse me. Uh, appreciate it again, family. Let's show some love uh, to Nora Bain. Also, let's show some love to J.L. King, for the contribution as well as uh well as Yah's daughter. So again, let's show some love uh for Yah's daughter, uh JL King, and also uh our sister here. Let me bring it up here, and also our sister here, Nora Bain. So, family, let's show some love and support for our, our brothers and sisters who made some um made these contributions tonight. And again, I really appreciate the love and support. Uh, greatly appreciative. Love you guys. All right. So let's show some love, family. Let's show some love. Okay. So again, Luther's Chris Kringle is actually called Christ of the wheel. Christ of the wheel. What does that mean? Right. Christ of the wheel is the title of the Norse year god at the winter solstice, Christmas, as the sun god born again. Wait a minute. So we see how all of this tied together. So his title seems to have been applied to a sacrificial victim on a fiery wheel. So this is dealing with human sacrifices on a fiery wheel. Is there another potential influence? Another potential source of influence? Is there another? Well, let's give one more. The Greek god of the sea, known as Poseidon, also have a popular title, the sailor, which St. Nicholas was called. So St. Nicholas went by the sailor. Why is this? Why, why, why am I bringing this up? Because we... We, we saw how Chris Kringle's tied into this. We saw how Chris Kringle's tied into this. So let's deal with St. Nicholas. We dealt with fortune or the goddess of fate, the Roman goddess of fate. We just dealt with, you know, uh, Chris Kringle. 
right? Christ of the fiery wheel. Now let's deal with this Greek God here, supposedly the God of the sea, known as Poisondon, who also have a popular title called the Sailor. So St. Nicholas was also called the Sailor. All right. So Nicholas name was the same as old Nick. Hold Nick car. Uh oh. Y'all know what that Nick is synonym, synonymous to Nig. Right. And y'all know what that says. Anyway, I'm not going to get into it tonight. Right. Which is the Teutonic sea god known as king of the Nixies, which means sea nymphs. Nicholas was also equated with Woden, right? To God Woden. So in Italy, St. Nicholas supplanted a female boon giving deity called the grandmother or Pasqua or Epiphanani, um, Epiphania or Bifana. Okay, so who used a who used to fill the children's stockings with their gifts? Let me say that again. Who used to fill children's stockings with their gifts. So when we go back here, this grandmother, Epiphany, uh, uh, Naya, excuse me if I butchered his name, Bafana, right? But the key is the name is grandmother is the one we're going to focus on. So this grandmother used to fill children's stockings with her gifts. The grandmother was ousted from her shrine at Bari, which became the center of St. Nicholas or St. Nicola uh, cult. So Roman Catholic sailors carried the saint's image out to sea. On his feast day, as pagan sailors formally carried the image of the sea god or goddesses. Right. So again, let's go back to Cat Williams because is this what he promoting? What I just covered? Because we covered the goddess of fate that uh, you know I thought about when I saw this jewelry. Also, Chris Kringle, which is referred to Christ of the Fiery Wheel. Then also St. Nick, which is also referred to as the grandmother. Dealing with, again, this is all paganism. This is, and this is his quote again, this is that thing you see all uh, Anunnaki guys have that looks like a wristwatch it's a timekeeping compass what does cap williams believe we getting there what does he believe who are the anunnakis who are the anunnaki who are these people is this where cat williams got the ship wheel design from because when you look at here cat williams said it's a compass so let's zoom in and you can see the compass. You see north, right? Let's slide it up a little bit. North, south, east, west, northeast, southeast, southwest, northwest. So we see this does look like a compass. It is a compass. And this looks like a, a ship's wheel. So this is a compass. This is a compass. Let's see who the Anunnaki's are. Let's see who they are. Let's let's go to the Britannica. Let's get some clarity on who the Anunnaki is. As you see here, it says class of gods within the ancient Mesopotamian pantheon. The precise meaning of the terms, in other words, princely seed in Sumerian remains ill-defined as the number of these gods. Their names and their functions vary according to the limited, what, what, you know, not getting into that yet. But it says here that the Anunnaki is a class of gods, a class of deities within ancient Mesopotamia. So it goes on to say, among the gods named in some texts as members of the Anunnaki are Enil, uh, in, uh, Enil, uh, Ea or Enki, I'm not going to butcher these names, but you get the gist of it, family. And you guys know this one right here, Ishtar, Anana, 
This is where you get Easter. And and Lil, the God of air who separated heaven and earth, is generally regarded as the most prominent of these. The ancient Hittites, right? The, the Hittites, remember, this is all part of those seven nations that was occupying the promised land that the Most High told Israel not to mix and mesh with. Do not take on their belief systems. Be separated from them, right? But nevertheless, we see the Hittites and Hurrians, whose mythologies refer to a set of former gods banished to the nether um, the netherworld by a newer generation, eventually identified the former gods with the Anunnaki in treaties they invoked as witnesses to ensure that oaths were kept. So are the Anunnaki, are they fallen angels? Because according to, as we just pointed out, the culture of uh, the ancient Mesopotamians, the Anunnaki's are a group of gods, a group of deities. And I know many will go to and default to the thought of fallen angels. So are the Anunnaki the fallen angels? And I'm just asking this question and we're, we're going to navigate through this. So whatever your, whatever your thoughts are, post it in the comments. But we're going to answer this question with scripture. Are the Anunnaki the fallen angel? And we're getting some breadcrumbs here. And I'll show you when we get to that point why I say we, I'm giving you some breadcrumbs. Is this the oldest wristwatch? Now, before we continue, right, this is uh, one of the images, right? Mesopotamia, Anunnaki, right? One of the one of their gods, and notice they are uh, this particular god or deity is wearing a, a compass on his wrist. A watch on his wrist. So are we in sin for wearing wrist, uh, wrist watch? If we wear a watch. Are we in sin? Are we uh, promoting the, um, demonology? Are we promoting the worship of demons? Is this a satanic ritual? Are we pre performing, you know, are we participating in all these things, engaging in these things because you are wearing a wrist watch? You have a clock in your wall. So this is why we have to make sure that we understand. Fully understand before we start uh, putting labels on people, but I'm going somewhere with this. I'm going somewhere with this. All right. So let's go to Genesis chapter six, verse four. Let's see what it says. There were giants, Napal Yam, in the Israeli Nephilim, in the earth in those days. And, and also after that, when the sons, Ban Yah, Alahayim, came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty. Gabar Yam, men which were of old, men of renown. Now, this is one of the passages that we see when we start dealing with fallen angels. It says, There were giants in the earth in those days. And all after that, when the sons Banya of Allahayim came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children unto them, the same became mighty, men which were of old. Men of renown. So let's go to the Eastern Bible Dictionary. Let's get an idea of what they say about this word Nephilim. And this is the Eastern Bible Dictionary uh, that was published in 1894. All right, let's see what it says. It reads Nephilim, and it gives you some scriptural references, uh, Genesis uh, 6 4, of where this word is being used, right? So we see here Nephilim, giants. The Hebrew word left untranslated by the revisers. But it goes on to say the name of one of the Canaanitish tribes. And then it goes on to say the revisers have, however, translated the Hebrew Giborim 
in Genesis 6, 4, mighty men. All right, so we're going to give clarity here. So did the angels have sexual relations with the daughters of men? Because many teach that the fallen angels had intercourse with the daughters of men to produce giants, abnormally tall people. All right. So what is the meaning of came in, came in unto? Because we see that in the scriptures. Well, let's go here. Let's see what it means. Right. Uh, the Israeli, you see, it says bow. In other words, to go or come, befall, besiege, to come. And then we see, in other words, against and out upon to pass. Enter, enter in, enter into, entering, entrance, right? And it goes on to say, vade, invade, take, take in, way. So did these angels actually have intercourse with these women? Or were they simply possessed? I'm just asking these questions, family. I want to make sure we put things in this proper per perspective. You're the jury. I'm just teaching this to you. When it's all said and done, you have to work out your own salvation. And family, let's be respectful inside the comment section as well. So were they simply possessed? Right. Did the ain't let's go back here. Did the angels actually have intercourse with the women or were they simply possessed? Were they simply deceived like Eve? Right. Because remember, Eve was deceived by who? Hasatan. And no, Eve did not have a physical, uh, or should I say intercourse, with Hasatan. No, Cain did, is not a product of that. The scripture is clear that Cain came by way of Adam knowing Eve. That's the scriptures. So why didn't the writer, uh, why, why didn't the writer use the word no? Excuse the typo here. Why didn't the writer just put the word no or yada? And I'm asking this question because let's see what that word means. Let's go to the Hebrew dictionary definition of the word yada. As you see here, it says to know, including observation, care, recognition. We see acknowledge, acquainted, uh, acknowledge, acquaintance. All right. It goes on to say advise, answer, appoint, assure, beware, be diligent. No. All right. So but let's see what this word no to get more understanding of what this word no or yada means. Let's go to the etymological dictionary definition of this word. It says perceive a thing to be identical with another. Be able to distinguish, perceive, understand as a fact or truth. But here's the kicker to experience, live through, meaning to have sexual intercourse with. So when we see Yada and when we see the scripture that says Adam knew Eve and that passage is making this making it clear that now they are having what at that point. Uh, they, they have an intimacy and produced Cain and Abel because it says Adam knew Eve. And then the most high blessed her with Cain. So remember. Not Paul. Also means, and, and, and I'm going to define this as well because I, I didn't put the definition in. I should have placed it here. But I'll say this again. Now, Paul actually means fall, falling away, right? Let me say that again. Fall, falling away, fallen. Not Paul or Naphlim. It means to fall. It means to fall away, right? It means fallen. It also means tyrant. It means bully. So was the sons of Anak giants? Were, were they giants? And we're going to answer this question as well. Was the son of Anak, sons of uh, Anak, simply bullies? Right? Were they descendants of the fallen angels? We got a lot to unpack here, but we're going to do it in a, a very simple way. Were they simply tyrants? So let's go to Numbers chapter 13, starting at verse 31. But the men that went up with him said, we be not able to go against the people, for they are stronger, 
Chazak than we. And they brought up an evil report in the of the land, which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof. And all the people that we saw in it are men of a great statue. We see Madawath or Madwath. And there we saw the giant Napal Yam, or in the Israeli Nephilim, the sons of Anak or Inak, which come of which come of the giants, and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so we were in their sight. All right, so let's go to the Hebrew dictionary definition for the word giants. Let's see what. This word, as we dealt with it in the uh, Eastern Bible Dictionary, let's see what it means in this uh, this this uh, Bible uh, dictionary, which is the the the, uh, the Hebrew Strong's. As you see here, it says bully, tyrant, giant. Down here in the entry number one, giants, Nephilim, or Nephilim. So we see that it can mean giant, it can be bully, it also means tyrant, but you have to know the context of what you're reading. So now Paul was not only used for the transliterated word giant, but it also transliterates to the word bully and to the word tyrant. All right, so when we go to the primitive root of this word, now Paul, let's see what it says. Let's go to the um, primitive root. Right, not Paul, even though you see not fall, not getting into the, the letters here. But it says to fall, cast, cast down, cast self, cast lots, cast out. Then we go on to see it says here, fall, cause to fall, let fall, make fall, ready to fall, fall away, fall down, fall in, falling. So this is what that word not Paul or not fall means. And when you had at the em, that's the plural of this word. But anyway, it says fell, felling, fugitive, rot, make rot or make to rot, throw down, to fall, be cast down. So now Paul also means to fall, falling away. It means Fallen. So Anak is described with uh with having a very unique feature. I gotta I gotta uh proofread this man. <laughs> you know, my apologies, family. Didn't get a chance to proofread this. I put this together. Uh took me about an hour to put this presentation together. So that's why I was a little late here. I wanted to make sure I had some notes here. So again, Anak is described with having a very unique feature. Let's go, let's go to here. Let's go to this Eastern Bible Dictionary. It says, Anak, long neck. So it says, Anak, basically his special feature, he has a long neck. All right, so are these tall people? Are these, let's just say, if we want to say they really tall people, right? Are these the same, if we want to use the word giants in terms of their size, or if we want to use uh, tyrant, in terms of their behavior, bullying, are these same giants that existed prior to the flood? And guess what? I'm going to say no. Why am I saying that? These are not the same people. And many will say these are the descendants of them. Well, let's see here. Let's give scripture. Matthew chapter 24, verse 37. And family, uh, anyway, I'm not going to get into that. I'm not going to get into that. Matthew chapter 24, verse 37. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day Noah entered into the ark. So this is giving you an idea of what was happening, you know, when we see how bad things were and the most high literally flooded the entire earth. But notice verse 39. 
and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So if we want to go with the thought, the thought of saying that the angels had intimacy with the daughters of men and produced all these abnormal giants and all abnormal sized people, the scripture makes it clear that all of that was wiped away. It says, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall the coming of the son of man be. So only people we have existing here is Noah, his sons and their wives. So the flood came and took them all away. So let's go to the Greek and see what it means. It says to take up, take away. All right, let's start here. To lift, to take up, take away, expiate. In other words, sin, expiate sin, put away, remove, take, take away. All right. So let's go to the Hebrew. It says to lift, burn, carry, carry away, cast. Take, take away, to be taken away, be swept away. So this is letting us know that the Most High completely took everything away. Let me go back here again. To lift, to burn, to carry, carry away, cast, take, take away, to be taken away, be swept away. So that flood swept everything away. There was no survivors outside of uh, outside of those that was inside the ark. When will the Messiah return? He will come. Uh, he will come just as he came uh, in Noah's day, right? At an unexpected, shocking time. That's what the scripture is telling us. Just as they didn't know that the end was coming, so he will come again when the world taken away with the exception of Noah and his family. Let me say that again. So the Messiah is clear that they were all taken away with the exception of Noah and his family. So are the sons of Anak and Og the same giants or the same tall people that existed prior to the flood? Because Christ makes it clear that they were all taken away. The flood took them all away. Well, I believe they were tall people, but I don't believe that they were as many would draw them to be like they're 20 and 30 and 40. And, you know, no, uh, -uh. I believe they were tall. They were tall people, just like you have extremely short people. Right. Uh, like the pygmies or the twas. But nevertheless, let's go to second Peter chapter two, verse four. Let's see what it says. For if Yahweh spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell and put them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. All right. Verse five. And spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. So it makes it clear those fallen angels, they cast down. Those fallen angels are cast down. That, that, that occurred during the flood, but it didn't just stop there. It goes on in verse five and spare not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person. So it's saying that it just say uh, the eighth person. So it saved, the, uh, saved Noah, Noah's wife, as well as Noah's sons, three sons, and their wives. So it was no one else on the ark. There was no angels on the ark. There was none of that crazy stuff going on, going on, on the ark. Because it makes it clear that none was spared. None was saved. Okay. So again, spared not the old world. So this confirms not a single fallen angel, nor did their offspring survive the flood. This confirms also that Noah and his sons' wives were not descendants of the fallen angels. Let's go back here. This is that thing you see all Anunnaki guys have that looks like a wristwatch 
It's a time keeping compass. That's going back. And I, I know I could go deeper with the Nephilim and all that. I'm not going. I just want to give a little bit of that. But let's bring it back to what Cat Williams said. This is that thing you see all Anunnaki guys have that looks like a wristwatch. It's a timekeeping compass. So again, family, I asked the question, what does Cat Williams believe? Let me say that again. What does Cat Williams believe? What does he believe? I'm looking at some comments here real quick. No, Style Trender TV. I read with scripture. There was not a single survivor. But being eight feet tall, nine feet tall, right? We see that there's not, they're, they're eight feet tall. Um, someone that's eight feet tall right now. There have been people that have been uh, very tall. We You got tribes out there i believe they called the um oh, i can't think of the name of that that tribe watutsi they're that the, the average height of the men are like seven feet like six nine to seven feet Let, let's let's not try to make something more than what it is now we know that there were tall people extremely tall people but these are not any nothing survived that flood we cannot say that there was a remnant. No remnant of those fallen angels survived. And as we see with scripture, those fallen angels are not roaming around the earth. So we know everything was wiped out. But guess what? <laughs> you know, you can grow tall. I mean, you could, I mean, when you start looking at different groups, yeah, you got abnormal, um, you got uh tribes that's much taller than the other. You you got Tribes that are smaller than the norm. You got tribes that has more weight. You have tribes that have that are thinner. You have tribes, you know, you you have the different variations. So just because we uh again, when we look at uh Anak, it said that they had long necks. That's what made them un um, it's the special feature of them that they had long necks. Not saying that they were. Uh, and when we think of giants, this is where we have to be careful not getting into the fables. We start thinking of Jack and a Beanstalk. We start thinking of that type of giant. Right. But eight, nine feet, that's still tall. So the Philistines, there's not a single scripture that says that they were a remnant of the Nephilim because we're clear that the Most High wiped it all away. But guess what? You know, you can you can grow. Right. Different groups can grow. In my family, the women are very tall. The women at average height is like 5'11". Between 5'11 and 6'4". The men, <laughs> average height in my family, especially the younger generation, they're, they're, the younger generation, they're like 6'8", six, 6'9", six, easily. I got a nephew, he was 7'1", at the age of 16. So I'm saying this again, you know, I'm just going to uh, keep it simple. I'm not going to try to see, you know, explain where they all came from. But we do know. Come on now. Let me let me just I'm not even going to argue with this. I'm not even going to argue with this. You guys believe what you want to believe. Uh, I gave you scripture. None of them survived. But we see Shaq. Right. That's all I'm going to say. We see Shaq. We see uh, what's that guy that 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 uh, rookie. He's seven five. We see Manute Bowles with seven seven. So you guys can believe what you want to believe. If you want to believe in fables and all that, believe what you want to believe. But please, let's not get distracted with that. I don't want to get all into all of that because some of us can get so obsessive and miss the point. The point is not getting into all that Nephilim stuff, because, again, truth be told, that's not a salvation issue. All right. So I want to make sure we understand. All right. I want to make sure we understand. So let's let's not get sidetracked. The question is, what does Cap Williams believe? 
What does Cat Williams believe? I'm not taking any points, family. Not taking anything in consideration. We're going off the scriptures. Let's go off the scriptures. But let's 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 bring everyone back over to this thought. What does Cat Williams believe? And that is the question, right? Like I said, I didn't want to get all into the Nephilim. Just give you a little information because he mentioned Anunnaki. What does Cat Williams believe? And guess what? This is what he believed. The doctrine of the fall, um, the, uh, the doctrine of the false, uh, this is terrible here. The doctrine of the, uh, or the false doctrine of Billy Carlson. Let me correct this. I should have corrected this. That's what he believed. After listening to uh, the interview with Joe Rogan, right? After listening to the, the doctor, um, the dead, painful uh three-hour video listen going back over and listening to shannon sharp's interview of him listening to some of the things that he said in other interviews cat williams yeah he according to him he believed in christ when you listen to him he believed in in the uh mark of the beast because he talked about that in the joe rogan he believed that hasatan exists but if you take it a step further, he believed basically in a nutshell of the celestials. Now you get into the uh, the Babylonians, right? Or not the Babylonians, the uh, Mesopotamian deities, as we pointed out. We start getting into, as we pointed out, the Anunnaki's. In that video, he talked about aliens. He talked about we, be, be, you know, aliens. Uh, dropped us, uh, dropped the early humans off here. All that went way out of in left field. So, guess what? Have you guys seen the movie Eternals? Have you saw that movie Eternals by by um by uh, Marvel? Have you and and, and this guy uh, Carson? When I start really looking him up. This guy is way out in some esoteric stuff. He's he meshing everything together. All roads lead to lead to home. He believe in Christ. He believe in the Egyptians. He believe he do all, he does all of these things. So that's why I want to bring this all in because we, we, I don't want to uh, get caught up in some other stuff. I want to bring it back here. That's right. I am PC. Billy Car Car um, Carson, basically, he believe in everything. That's when you start getting into uh, that esoteric stuff. He believe he he practiced uh, the Egyptology. He's he he believes in the Mesopotamian stuff. He does all of those things. He and you hear him referencing this. He teach that Christ was taught uh, by the Maggies and all that uh, Magis and went to uh, you know he teach it all they they lump everything together that's when you start getting into this new wave uh of teaching so this is where uh when you listen to cat williams he believe in all of this this is why it seemed like wait a minute when you first listen to him if you listen to him on the surface it sound like he believe in christ it sound like he believe in the scriptures but then when you start really listening to it, it's like wait a minute he believed that we were uh aliens dropped so he believed in a lot of stuff. And when I start thinking about it, it's like, wait a minute. You know, that's when you start dealing with the An Anunnaki's. That is what's supposed to be a group of beings, a group of deities, as we pointed out, the Mesopotamian gods. And when you start dealing with the celestials and all of that, like celestials given uh, being born by the destruction of planets and, all, you know, it's it's way out there in left field. That's what I believe. I believe that Cat Williams is he believe in that false doctrine, that craziness that Billy Carson is teaching. So he believed that when you see in a lot of these books, these these so-called missing books, which is nothing more than uh, Gnosticism. You know, this is why, guys, you have to be careful, man, just because a book they may label it missing, like the book of Adam and Eve. That is a false book right we have genesis that tells us what happened to adam and eve that is a false book that is not an 
that 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 is not a book that you should allow to trump with Torah. You know, so this is why we 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 have to be careful, family. We have to be careful. We have to guard our spirits like never before, right? So after, because uh, on the surface, I thought that uh, Cat Williams was a believer. No, he believes in it all. He believes in that the ancient Sumerian doctrine. He believes in the ancient um, uh, Mesopotamian doctrine. He believes in the Egyptians. He believes in whatever's the ancient stuff. He believes in it. So that's why he's able to say, well, you know, talk about the devil. This is why he could talk about, uh, for example, uh, what he's wearing around his neck and on his wrist, the Anunnaki. This is why he believes, again, that, you know, uh, aliens dropped us off here. This is why he says the pyramids were built. Wasn't built by uh, man. It was built by aliens. Matter of fact, in Freemasons, that's what they, they'll teach, that the pyramids was, were, were built from the top down. See, this is where we have to be careful, family, that age of Aquarius, you know, that, that you know, that's where you start, uh, what, what triggered back in like the 60s, the 70s, the age of Aquarius, getting in all kinds of, uh, uh, you know, cult, occultish beliefs. Family, this is why we have to make sure that we guard our spirits we got to be prayed up family so i want to take a little time out here not drop the the link uh you know if my cousin is watching feel free to jump on but family this is why i wanted to uh do this uh lesson to really deal with cat williams like i said uh cat williams and especially when you start dealing with or understanding these different belief systems out here. And once I, once I really listened to the interview, it was like, okay, I know exactly what he, I know exactly where uh, a bulk of his influence is from. He may not mention his name, but when you, that's who he, that's this false teacher uh, is, is where he's getting this information from. Family is not that deep. It's not that deep family. It is not that deep. So family, like I said, I didn't, you know, didn't want to have us get sidetracked with side conversations about going back and forth about uh, the Nephilim, the Giants and all that other stuff. No, I wanted to keep us on, fo on, on topic with what does this person believe? So family, this is why you have to be prayed up. You got to fast. You have to read the scriptures. And be careful of anyone that's trying to push any of this stuff, like these so-called lost books. They're not lost. If they were lost, you wouldn't see them. So many of these books, many are now, that was false books back then, are false pseudo books now. And many are pushing it. And they'll use that, hey, this is why they, they, they don't want this to be included in the Bible. No, it never was included in the Bible. <laughs> never was uh you know, uh, you know, included in when 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 they began to, uh, you know, the the can canonical, uh, can I, uh, canonical books it was never included in that. Never included in it. That's why I say you have to be careful. For example, the book of Jashers. There's two. There's several books of Jashers, even though Jasher is mentioned inside the scriptures, but it's a forgery. It's forgeries. The book of Jasher are forgeries, multiple books of Jasher. One of them written by the Mormons. It's a 16th century writing. This is why you got to be careful, family. Some of these books, you got the book called The Carpenter's Son. That was written in the 6th century. You got a lot of these books that's out there. They are not ancient books, but family. And this is why you have to be careful. You got so many people that haven't even read the book of Genesis, reading all these so-called lost books. They're not lost. Don't let anyone fool you by saying, here's a lost book. Here's what they don't want you to have in the Bible. No. Mm -mm. The, the law, which is the first five books, the prophets. And of course, uh, you know, when we get into the poetry and all that, that's part of it. 
And of course, what they call the Apocrypha, the Deuter uh, Deuter uh, Canonical Books, Deuter Canonical Books, which they, you know, different labels they came up with the Apocrypha. That's another one of the labels. And also the testimonies of the disciples. The testimonies of the disciples, you know, uh, of course, the Epistables of Paul, those are all part of what we should be reading from. The Book of Enoch. The Book of Enoch is what would what Ezekiel would call or label, I think it's Ezekiel 13, a, a magical book. The When I read Enoch, it's like, okay, let me read Enoch because, and when I read Enoch, I'm like, wait a minute. You got uh, uh, giants that's anywhere from 2,500 feet tall, size of the Empire State Building. You got uh, the angels looking like Caucasians. It's all, man, the, the, I could, I, I'm going to do a teaching on it. That could be a sensitive uh, subject to some because when I taught on the Book of Jubilees, not Jubilees, um, Jasher, uh, actually, I think I touched on. Um, Jubilees as well. Um, it can be a sensitive topic to some. So I may touch, I may do a lesson on Enoch uh, to really show you all the contradictions. And if you're not careful, family, it, it can mess you up. The book of Enoch is not a good book. I'm just being real with you. You know, uh, the, anyway, I'll leave that alone. I'll leave that alone. I'll leave that alone. But with that being said, family, I don't see anyone jumping on, but um, we're going to go ahead and wrap up tonight. And family, the, the rule of thumb as I teach our assembly, the ministers, the elders and ministers at our assembly, anything that contradict the law, the prophets, right? The, um, the apocrypha, because of, you could confirm the apocrypha with the law and the prophets, as well as uh, the renewed covenant, which many will call the New Testament. Anything that contradicts those, stay clear from it. Let me see. Here. I just pur purchased the Ethiopian Bible. Is that a good thing? No, it's, the, the uh, Ethiopian Bible is not a bad Bible. Actually, uh, that's one of the earlier uh, Bibles before um, the oldest, actually, you know, outside of when we look at the... Um, the Torah, as far as the first five books, as well as the, the, the Law and the Prophets, that was another term for it. Um, you know, I know some of you guys uh, do the Sefer. I don't mess with the Sefer Bible because um, the way that it was put together had nothing to do with um, academics uh, or anything. It, I You know, my thoughts are the way that I see that Bible is the people that put that Bible together. It's actually not a Bible. Quite honestly, it's not even called the Bible. They can't even put the term Bible on it. But that Sefer, uh, you know, that book, because Sefer means book, right? The book. Um, I believe that the people that put that book together targeted our community. It was made specifically to take advantage and make money off this awakening. That's that's my belief. That's my belief. All right. So. I'll say this, even with the uh, the book of uh, Enoch being in the Ethiopian Bible, uh, again, uh, disregard that book. The Ethiopian Bible is the oldest Bible. That's like a second century, second, third century. But guess what? That wasn't part of the law of prophets uh, far as with the uh, Israelites. So even though if it's in the Ethiopian Bible, I'll say that again. Uh, be careful of that Bible. Don't don't mess with that book. I'm just being real with you. You use your own discretion, but I'm gonna tell you that book is a, a pseudo book. It's a pseudo book. All right. So, like I said, I I don't have um the Ethiopian Bible, so I'm not sure if it's in there. But uh, some of you guys say Enoch is in there. I'm not sure. I don't. I uh, you know I I have to take a look at it. But even if it is. You know, just because some people, group of people decided to add it into theirs doesn't make the make it uh, valid. I read the book of Enoch and it's it's a false book. It's a pseudo book. 
All right. It's mystical. I mean, starting with the very first chapter, I was like, what in the world? But anyway, that's right. There's multiple books of uh, of Enoch, uh, you know, with, but actually Enoch, I believe the, the writings of Enoch started like a century or two B.C. and stretched all the way to like the second and third century A.D. All right. So that's why I say here. You know, family. Yeah, I, I know about the book of Clement, and that's what you'll see inside the Ethiopian Bible. I'll do a lesson on that because I don't want to, uh, uh, you know, take away from this lesson here. I'll do a lesson on dealing with the the letters of Clement. Uh, you know, we'll deal we'll deal with that. But right now, I, I'm just going to say to you guys, start with reading those first five books, the prophets. And the testimonies of the disciples. Start with that. Start with that before you start uh, getting into reading all this extra stuff. Because most people are reading extra the stuff that they think is missing. They haven't even read the foundational stuff. All right. So with that being said, family, I know we. Um, uh, I don't want to sound like I'm um, prolonging the live. We'll be live tomorrow night. I know I didn't post uh, any uh, topic for tomorrow, but I, it, I may continue on with this. If not, I'll deal with a different topic, but I'll post it well in advance. But really appreciate your family. Hope and pray uh, that you guys um, have a blessed remainder of the evening. I see a question here. What about the book of Nicodemus? Uh, stay clear from all that family. That's up to you. As for me and my house, I'm staying clear from that. Now, uh, Yahuwah, Servant 7, yes, I am doing a lesson on the Apocrypha. If you look at uh, last week's uh, live, I believe I did a lesson on the Apocrypha, I think uh, last Shabbat. Yeah, I did a lesson on the Apocrypha. Let me see if I can post it real quick before we wrap up. And um, I'm doing a series. I'm teaching a series on the Apocrypha. Let me see here. Let me post it real quick before I wrap up. But last week, last, actually, it, was, it wasn't Shabbat night. It was last uh, Saturday night is when I did the lesson. So let me see if I could go there real quick. And I will post this inside the chat. But there you have it, family. That's what, uh, after listening to Cat Williams, listening to a number of, of his videos, He's basically following that uh, Billy Car, um, that Billy Carson's guy. All right, here is the lesson that I started, uh, lesson number one, and I may, depending on how I'm feeling tomorrow night, I may do lesson number two. Uh, so that's the book. I mean, that's uh, dealing with the first lesson on the apocrypha. All right, uh, let's see here, and want to give a shout out here. Uh, Marjorie uh, Lemons, uh, thank you for the love and support. Really appreciate the contributions tonight from everyone. Um, Marjorie Lemons, Yai's daughter, uh, J.L. King, and of course, my sister Nora Bain. Really appreciate you guys for uh, the love and support tonight. And, um, you know, thank you guys for allowing the site to grow, uh, our platform to grow the way that it's grown. Uh, I'm working on some T-shirts so that way you guys can uh, have T-shirt. We woke now T-shirts. I'm working on that now. And man, I just noticed we went over. We had 65K. Come on, family. We we December. I didn't know. I didn't think we was going to make it to the, uh, 50K. We were sitting at 45 for so long. And then we just surged to hit 50. And then uh, in uh, February, we hit 60 and here it is march we're hitting 65 so family uh we know that this is in spite of youtube doing whatever they can to unsubscribe people i get emails of people or stating that uh youtube has unsubscribed them they've been doing that on a regular basis so but nevertheless nevertheless i want to thank you guys for um getting the channel to where it is because had it not been for you guys we just be taking a walk by ourselves. All right. So I really appreciate you guys. I see um, my sister Carol in the, in the building. 
Sister Carol, did you want to jump on before I uh, jump off? If so, I'll drop the link. If you want to jump on, if you saw the lesson on what we covered tonight, I'll drop the link inside the comment section if you want, if you have anything that you want to share before I wrap up. All right. So that's the link for you, Sister Carol. But again, family, um, we'll do, you know, I, I want to deal with the apocrypha. I encourage you guys, go and watch the lesson I did last week. I dropped the link inside the comment section uh, in the chat. I encourage you guys, watch that lesson, and that'll help lay out, lay down the foundation of how to approach those books. So with that being said, family, with that being said, Really appreciate you guys. Uh, in the words of the Most High, Yahweh, uh, the, the words of encouragement that he gave Moses to give to the children of Israel, he said to them, and this is coming from Exodus chapter uh, 14, uh, verse 13 to 14. He told them, he said, fear ye not, stand still and see the salvation of Yahweh. These Egyptians that you see here today would not have power over you ever again. The Most High will fight for you. But here's the kicker family. He told them that they have to hold their peace. In other words, the Hebrew word there is karash, which means be quiet. Can't go back. Can't stay here. Keep moving forward. Shalom. Listen. Genesis chapter. Listen, Genesis chapter 11, verse 10 explains the genealogy of Shem. Shem was a black man in Africa. If you repeat this back, Genesis 14, verse 13, Abraham steps on the scene. Being a descendant of Shem, which is a fact, means Abraham too was black. Abraham, born in the city of a black man, called Nimrod, grandson of Ham. Ham had four sons. One was named Cain. Here, let me do some explaining. Abraham, Isaac was the Jacob had 12 sons, for real. And these were the children of Israel. According to Genesis chapter 10, these were the children of Israel. According to Genesis chapter 10.